So while development chances are increasing a little bit for tropical development, I'm not expecting anything significant here. We'll get into that through the course of this video. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas back with you. This is it. There is the highlight. We're going to talk about this potential tropical system, at least a medium chance for development, over the next couple of days through the holiday weekend, born out of a stalled cold front draped across the deep south in the southeast corner of the United States. We're going to break all that down, some of the impacts. If you do have plans along the southeast beaches for the holiday weekend and look at some models going forward, some of the ensembles, that new Google AI model, I'll show you what that is also suggesting in terms of tropical development. If you do want to stay updated this hurricane season and weather in general, just want to hang out, have a weather conversation with us, join the very fastly growing weather team here. Really appreciate the support with all the new subscribers and long-term subscribers. Let's get to it. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. We'd love to know what the weather is doing, where you're watching from. There is the official outlook, if you will, from the National Hurricane Center, giving it a 40% shot for development over the next seven days. We don't have an entity to track just yet. That is because, as we speak, we have a front that's kind of stalling out over the southeast corner of the United States and parts of the Deep South. This is now turning into a stationary front, meaning our cold front. It's just stalling out there. It's really not moving north or south, so it is stationary. This is a very common thing to see late June, early July for tropical development. We get a front that is dying or stalling off the warm waters of the North Gulf Coast, southeast corner of the United States, and you can get something to spin up along that front given if the waters are warm enough. We'll take a look at the water temperatures in just one second. But I have the outline of that orange blob that I just showed you onto the surface map here. The rain coming to Florida over the next couple of days is not from this tropical entity. It is because of this stalled front acting as a highway for this tropical moisture out of the Gulf to work its way across the Florida Peninsula. While there is a slight chance for an area of low pressure to develop on the Gulf side of Florida, it's becoming more likely that if, and it's a big if still, something develops, it is going to be onto the Atlantic side and then could start to push back a little bit toward the Carolinas over the next couple of days, really as we get into Saturday and Sunday, the back end of 4th, uh, Fourth of July weekend. So just a heads up there that you see that kind of moisture trail riding up the southeast corner of the United States. We'll take a look at some rainfall, expected rainfall totals and the models in just one second. There is that highlight again. So I wanted to put that outline of that potential area for development. And again, to be clear, these areas that the Hurricane Center draw, it doesn't mean that we're going to see something develop here and it's going to go like that. These do not behave like the traditional forecast cone what the hurricane center is drawing here is okay the storm could potentially develop here 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 and here that's the favorable area or at least the highlighted area where something can de to develop so this is not a track per se um it can go here whoops grab the map instead of the telestrator it can go that way it can go that way that has nothing to do with the location or the movement of that disturbance. So while we have this up, we're going to take a, the water temperature here, 85 in the Gulf Stream, 85 kind of going down the Florida coast, still in the warmer waters of the Gulf Stream. In the Gulf itself, we're still in the mid 80s. So that is way above normal for this time of the year, running anywhere from three to five degrees above normal, especially the further away you get from the Florida coastline. Again, this is going to be the area of potential development. So it's a little cooler relative to that water in between the Gulf Stream and Bermuda, still plenty warm enough as we just saw with temperatures in the mid 80s to support tropical development. So the question is, will it happen? For that, I'm going to pull up our other weather computer here and I want to show you some of the models and just kind of the, the genesis, the, as we call it, the makings of this potential tropical thing here. So we're going to backtrack this. I had it over the weekend. So we're going to start things off on Thursday. So what we have here is the remnants kind of our front. All of the, the this color, if I can talk, yellow is not the best color to use there as it blends in with the yellow on the map. 
all of the yellow, orange, and red, that's the amount of low-level spin in the atmosphere. So that's going to be right along our front. What we're looking for as we go forward in time here is counterclockwise motion and kind of like a ball of yellow, orange, or red. That would be an indication that something is trying to organize along that front. So pay attention for that over the next couple of minutes. I'm going to show you the GFS. This is what I have up now. And then also the European rendition of that. So let's go forward in time and notice what starts to happen. Notice this flow here. So we have that. And then going into that way, there's a little bit of a concentration right through here. We're going to take this out a little bit further. This is, by the way, now uh, Friday, July 4th. So this is the 4th of July. And see how we have more of that counterclockwise motion, just like that. Let's go out a little further. See how it kind of retrogrades a little bit. And now you can see that circulation with the wind barbs even right there, indicating that we have something broad trying to develop, nothing significant, but nonetheless, uh, the GFS would argue for, and there it is kind of pinwheeling, would argue for a tropical depression, at most, a low-end tropical storm. One of the things here that we always have to watch out for, we've seen this time and time again right off the Carolina coastline, the Gulf Stream is super warm, and it's deeply warm. It's kind of uh, the Energizer bunny for these storms um so a lot of times models on the global scale like this would miss any kind of quick flare-up to get this into a named storm i think we have a decent shot at tropical depression and a non-zero chance that we do get a named storm somewhere let me bring my telestrator back out in this area if it were to find the gulf stream so that's one of the things that we're going to watch for again that's one of the, we call this the meso scale the smaller scale impact that sometimes the models at this stage in the game can't resolve. So, but it's just always something that we look out for. Still, though, wouldn't be anything significant. And there's a lot of ifs in this in this scenario as well. So that is the GFS. Let's go back. This is July 4th again. And notice the European. I'm gonna go a little faster because I'm gonna show you can see the counterclockwise motion. And again, I want you to look right in here. And then let me back that train up. See, it kind of red, it goes out and then kind of pulls back in towards Georgia and the Carolinas a little bit. So that's the European also suggesting that some kind of developing low pressure is going to be possible as we get into Saturday and Sunday, the 5th and 6th of July. And then it could work up into the Carolina coastline. This is how it looks when you add the rainfall back into it again. And sorry if I'm boring you here. I just wanted to kind of show you some of the, the low-level spin and the meteorology behind it before we got into some of the rainfall stuff. But here we go on the 2nd of July through the 3rd of July. And notice, again, we really don't have anything organized. We just have a big, strung-out plume of moisture here. And that's what's going to give Florida the heavy rain Thursday through the 4th of July, and then continuing into Saturday, there is this very broad spin as we move into Saturday night and into Sunday. This is the European rendition once again. So I'm going to take you back to the other weather computer. There are the temperature anomalies once again. In terms of the rainfall forecast through Sunday, so this is going to be through the entirety of the holiday weekend, you see where... Saturday, I should say, so not the complete entirety. I will pull this out a little bit more. Let me change my time stamp on this. Um, this is going to be, again, through the rest of the holiday weekend, and it kind of shows you the path. And notice how that last little bit, I'm going to replay this again to kind of show you and to draw your attention to it. Look towards North Carolina. Where the heaviest rain is is kind of where the thing could track. And at the very end, as we get into Sunday and Monday, it starts to creep closer to the coast again. So you see the heaviest rain staying out to sea, but really from South Florida and then kind of working up the eastern seaboard through the Carolinas from about the 4th of July through Sunday night, the 6th of July, and then continuing into early portions of next work week. So at the very least, not the best weather for the beach for the Carolinas, specifically South Florida as well, because of this stalled front and because of potential tropical development, at least on the Carolinas side, especially 
nonetheless, wanted to give you an update on this. But again, I do not foresee any significant development. If we do see that bubble turn red, I think the forecast is staying the same. It's just that, okay, the forecasters at the Hurricane Center are getting more confidence that meteorologically this could become at least a tropical depression. Again, that's that closed center that storms around the center or a little bit of a hybrid of both, that subtropical thing. While we do have a closed center, it's gaining some of its strength from uh, the warm waters of the ocean, some of its strength from differences in temperature and pressure in the atmosphere. That's a subtropical thing, kind of like a cyborg storm. So if you notice that bubble, for, go to orange and red, and I'll let you know about it, and especially in the community section, don't freak out. Don't think that, okay, oh my gosh, the forecast has changed. This is getting worse because I guarantee you the thumbnails are going to be out there that say this just got worse. And yeah, there's higher confidence that meteorologically we're going to get a potential tropical system or a subtropical system. It doesn't mean impacts are changing or the overall strength of this expected possible system is changing at all. Here's where we stand. I always like to end the videos this time of the year with, you are here, and we've crossed into July. You see there's a long way to go. We've had those two short-lived storms, really nothing to write home about. The peak is still yet to come. Again, most of the activity happens, 85% uh, of the hurricane season happens from about August 20th through October 15th. So when you see kind of a slow start or some weaker, ugly-looking storms that we've had out there for the last two named storms, um, I just want to remind you of that. Atlantic hurricane season names for this year. We've used Andrea. I keep, Andrea. I don't know where that came from. And then Barry, that made landfall in Mexico as a low-end tropical storm as well, bringing some heavy rain. Next name, name storm up is Chantal. Wanted to also talk about, we broke down our hot zones earlier in the season, um, and we did have a high opportunity for potential tropical impacts along the Carolina coastline. While the impact of this one, not going to be super high, it could fall into that red area for at least impacts from a tropical system. So we're going to be watching that. And as we get deeper into the hurricane season, it continues to look like that active stretch or that active storm track would be through the Bahamas, getting close to Florida, and maybe closing into the Carolinas again. That continues to show up in some of the long-range guidance, but that is going to be a story for another time. So if you're interested in that stuff and talking long-range, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. I rambled on long enough. I know your time is valuable. Thank you a ton for sticking with us, uh, calling out the misinformation and the hype when it comes to this. Again, this is not going to be significant. I said that about 30 times now, but just wanted to give you a heads up that we could have a possible tropical depression or name storm off the Carolina coastline, Independence Day weekend, it's not going to be significant, but it's not coming at the best time being a lot of people want to be outside and do stuff on the 4th of July holiday. Be safe out there. Pay attention to the weather, and we'll catch you next time.